What's up guys, welcome back to Gearing Up for Monster Hunter Try You. This is episode 8, and today it is Bariath. And Bariath is definitely the hardest monster in Tundra, so this one will take me a bit. But, uh, yes, so we got a really, really, really good spawn. <laughs> Yeah, Bariath is really hard. I, uh, I tried to hammer, because, I mean, hammering works out pretty good, um, if you're, uh, with a group, but it, solo, it is incredibly frustrating, so I was just like, alright, I'm just gonna do exactly what I did for Bareth, not gonna take any chances, I'm just gonna switch straight to the Biako. well, even though I didn't switch to the Biako against Bareth, but I went Lansing, and Lansing ended up working out very, very good. So, yeah, Bariath is very tricky, and that's because he is really fast, he can pretty much has a full screen teleport. By that I mean from he can like jump from one end of the uh, of the screen to or the one end of the uh, the area to uh, the other end of the area. Which uh, makes it very, very difficult to uh, get in a uh, few hits on him. And that charge is incredibly difficult to punish as a Lancer, so... Yeah, this one does indeed take me a while. This is not one of my fastest runs of Bariath. I mean... Well, yeah, of course it isn't. I mean, my fastest run with Bariath is probably with a four-man team, but... I mean, it's just... In general, you have to be very, very cautious when you're against Bariath solo because, I mean, he can stun you, he can freeze you, he can, he can just stun lock you. I mean, it's he he's a tough monster, very, very, very difficult. But surprisingly, like a lot of things in this game, well, there are some monsters in this game that are easier with a team, and some monsters that are actually harder with a team. Like, for example, Alatrion, I'd say, is more difficult with a team. I mean, unless you're, I mean, if you're someone like me, because, I mean, like, I, I don't die to Alatrion anymore. Like, I, I, I haven't died to Alatrion in a long time, and, um, generally, um, whenever I die to, or whenever I lose, or whenever I fail the quest on Latrion, it's because of my teammates. And uh, but with Bariath, I mean, it's very, very, very rare that um, that um, that we get a quest failure from that because really the only f difficulty about Bariath is his speed. And they, he's so fast and he's so hard to hit. But if you have more than one person hitting him at once, you can have more than one person attack the wings. You can have more than one person, you know, keep setting up traps. So, you know, you can break wings and all that. And once the wings are broken on Bariath, it's, it's GG. Like, there's... There, there won't be anything Bariath will be able to do to you because every once he does that full-screen jumping teleport, as I call it, it, it's not a teleport, but it's like a giant lunging back... Uh, friggin' uh, jump. Lunging back jump. Yeah, I'm friggin' brilliant when it comes to when it comes to English. But no, uh, yeah, Bariath. That's really his only difficulty. I mean, he has a really strong tail in that it's hard to cut, but you don't really get anything from the tail aside from tails. So it's well. I mean, you can get Bariath spikes, I guess. But I mean, I don't know. I've I have really found a reason to cut the tail. <laughs> Except for, you know, when you fight Bariath for the first time, you go, Oh, I want to cut the tail! But uh, Bariath actually has a stronger tail than Latrion. So, little interesting little tidbit of knowledge. Well, actually, I think they're about the same. I think Bariath is about the same strength of tail as Latrion. I think it's a little bit stronger. A little bit more sturdy, I should say. But, yeah, he he's a weird monster. He's he's definitely one of those learning curve monsters. He he's the he's the Bareth of Tundra. I mean, a lot of people have trouble with this monster first time around, and a lot of people still to this day have trouble with this monster. Like in general, <laughs> I also could not remember 
uh, whether the um, whether the uh, the Biako or the uh, Alatrian Gleam did more damage to the uh, to uh, Bariath because yeah he's weak to fire but he's also probably a little bit weak to dragon and uh, the Alatrian Gleam is purple sharpness so I so I'm not sure I just went with the Bariath because it was safe I knew I couldn't be wrong and uh, Yako's worked in the past, so I'm just gonna go with what I know. And if the Gleam is actually stronger, then I'm sure uh, Listris will tell me that, because he's a Lansing god. That, that's difficult. <laughs> uh, nah, I'm joking. Um, yes. What else can I talk about? Oh, right. Um, if you're solo uh, against Bariath, Fighting him in this area, unless you spawn in it, is incredibly frustrating most of the time because, like, he can spot you as you're uh, climbing up the um, the little ledge to get up to his area. And I'm not sure if they fixed this in uh, Try G and Try U and all that, but in this game, even if you have earplugs and he roars, um, you still get knocked off that ledge. And since he spotted you. I mean, he'll just be continually attacking the ledge until, you know, he eventually jumps down. So that can get really annoying. So how I've fixed this, or how I've, you know, made it foolproof, is either wait until he turns around, or um, if he spots you, like, as soon as you enter the room, you crouch, and then you just walk around a little bit in, like, that little, uh, in that little area, and he'll eventually just fly away. Like, he'll just fly away and go to, like, two or three or, um, one of those other areas. And, uh, doing that, you'll be able to get in, a, get in an encounter with him and you'll be able to punish his roar. As opposed to, if he spots you in here, you won't be able to punish his roar. If he spots you while you're climbing up the, uh, the little ledge. Like, this ledge right here, the one I'm jumping off of. So... Yeah, keep that in mind. Um, it, it doesn't really come into effect if you're um, if you're um, not solo, because if you're not solo, normally peop at least one... Like, for some reason, spawning in six is really, really common. Like, it always happens for me. <laughs> like, I could have, like... S how many Bariath? I could probably have like 10 Bariath runs, or not 10 Bariath runs, but 10 runs in a, in Tundra in like one night, and I think seven of them would spawn in six, so. Yep, gonna get the sub-quest here, because Pitfall Trapping is actually a really good idea. Like, the game's not just doing that to be like, oh, you should, uh, you should use Pitfall Traps, duh, no. Uh, it's actually very, very, very intelligent to pitfall trap him if you have earplugs. Because if you have earplugs, then you can pitfall trap him. And then he breaks out of it, and he usually roars. Usually. Unless he's already in rage mode. If he's already in rage mode, he's obviously not going to roar. So You know he's in rage mode if... Um, I don't think there's really... Well, he's in rage mode right now, and the way you can tell is um, well, he's a lot faster and uh, little white smoke is coming out of his mouth where that wouldn't happen. And also that jumping teleport thing, I'll see if I can, um, like, I'll see if it ever happens and I'll try to point it out, what I was talking about, because it, it's not really a teleport. I just, I, I just don't know why I call it a teleport. Um... It's, it's that, basically. But he can do that across the entire screen. Or not the entire screen, the entire... Uh, the entire area, the entire landmass, the entire map, I guess. So, yeah. Um, hmm. I don't know what else to talk about with Bariath, to be honest. Um, I mean, it, it you, you have to counter a lot, and... Um, even if you counter, you can't really punish anything too well because he has a lot of back steps, a lot of um, a lot of jumps, a lot of dodges, and 
he's really difficult to punish, so you just have to be patient. It's like, you cannot attempt to, um, you cannot attempt to, uh, you know, speed run the crap out of this. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure Barayas technically has less health than Barath does. He's just a lot harder to uh, punish than uh, Barath is, so. I mean, yeah, I was stabbing the crap out of Barath, and as you can see, I'm really only getting in a few stabs at a time on Barayas, so. Oh, and if if you're going to solo Barayas, my recommendation, either Hammer with Evasion plus two, or Lance, do not great sword. Do not great sword Barayath at all, because you will become very, 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 very frustrated. Unless you can Unless like what almost worked for me is you can uh, Pitfall Trap spam and Pitfall Trap and Might Pill spam until um one of the wings is broken. And then as soon as he gets out of the uh, and as soon as he gets out of that stun you're putting him in, you can, um, he's going to go into rage mode, and that will give you another might pill attempt on uh, the other one of his wings, and attempt to break both of them. Because if you can break both of his wings, he's a lot easier to deal with. But other than that, like, he is incredibly frustrating. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's not something I would recommend. But you can try it if you've got balls, but it's... I, I wouldn't do it. And I consider myself a pretty good greatsword user, so... Anyway, hmm. What else can I say? Oh, right, um... The, uh... A lot of people like to compare the, um... The ice tornado thingy, like the, um... Like, uh, a Latrion's fire tornado. And it's really not like it at all, because... The Latrian's Fire Tornado is a lot longer range, and uh, even with a Lance, if you have Guard plus two, you still cannot block the um, the initial Fireball shot that um, that a Latrian does. You have to um, you have to block the uh, the explosion of it itself in order to block the um, in order to block the uh, the initial Fireball you have to have guard boost, so... Whereas with, um... Whereas with, um, Bariath, you don't need guard boost, and if you're a Lancer, you can literally just stand in front of him as he's doing that attack and just counter him, so... That is actually extremely helpful, uh, to the team, because... Well, they won't get hit by the ice tornado, because <laughs> you're just blocking it in mid-flight, and it won't have a chance for an explosion. So, yes. Um, yeah, this is what I, that's what I mean, but... I mean, the it, it still hit the ground, so it still exploded, but I blocked the, uh, the ice ball itself. <clears throat> uh, what else can I say? I mean, Bariath... I mean, he's a tricky monster, so I want to say more, but... Jeez. Okay, yeah, I, I can say that. Um, if, if you're with a team, focus on the wings. Don't focus on the face first, believe me. Like, if you break the wings early, breaking the face is going to be easy. Like, breaking the face on... On, uh... On, uh... Bariath is not difficult. It's really not difficult at all. Once you've broken both wings. And if you have a hammer on your team... Like, breaking the face is not going to be... It's not going to take you long, because you're going to break both wings, the hammer's going to, like, super pound, like, three times, stun him, and then, you know, get in a bunch... Get in, like, two more triple pounds and down below the face. It has, like, no health at all, not compared to, um... It, it has, like, no health compared to, like, Diablos' horns or Elatrion Sky Piercers. God. Electrion Sky Piercers probably have the health of a Mariah. <laughs> so. Actually, probably more than that. Infuriating to break Sky Piercers, trust me. I I have never been able to do it legit with a hammer. The only time I've ever been able to do it with a hammer is, um. 
there was this bow gunner on my team who was really friggin' cheesing. And it wasn't really cheating, it was cheesing. Like, here's my, here's the difference between cheesing and cheating. Cheating is physically, like, going into the game's code and, like, it, it's hacking, basically. Cheating is hacking. It's, it's the same thing. It's, like, your one-shot kills, it's your rapid-fire bowgun cluster shots without any use and recoil whatsoever that you can fire at. 4,800 miles per hour. It's your... It's your auto status. It's your things like... It's things that they didn't put in the game. It's things that break the game mechanics themselves. Cheesing is abusing something that they put into the game. For example, if you're a bow gunner and you're standing on top of a Latreon's um, little uh, rock walls or lava walls on the side... He'll, for some reason, keep attacking that over and over and over again. At least that's what happened with me. And uh, literally all I just did was I just kept super pounding. And, uh, and it kept stunning him and it kept, you know, flinching him. So he kept, you know, it eventually just broke his sky piercers and it did not take long at all. Yeah, I'm, I'm bad. I'm, I'm really terrible at lancing a... Uh, and lancing a Latreon. Or not lancing a Latreon, uh, hammering a Latreon. Great sword, I'm pretty decent. I mean, I, I can't solo him, but I'm okay. <laughs> wow, I got off on a massive fucking tangent there about a monster we're not even fighting. Awesome. I'm not going to redo this. Um, anyway, um, Bariath, 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 Bariath. I'm trying to break the wings for a side quest for the side quest, because, yeah, the side quests of this mission are actually, you know, pretty, uh, they work pretty much in tandem with each other, because if you're, um, if you're in a group, if you're in a group, then, uh, you can have, you can place down a pitfall trap, and, uh, you can just have the entire team go for the wings, and, uh, the wings should not take long to be broken after that, unless you really cannot generate DPS at all. <laughs> Which, um, I've been there. <laughs> I've, I've seen it all in this game, so. And I literally have seen it all, like, legit. <laughs> I, I don't think there's anything I haven't seen in this game. So, yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, for any monster in Tundra, Bariath, Giganox, um, let's see, Bariath, Giganox, um, Great Baggy, um, I made a mistake at the beginning and didn't paintball him, I would always paintball monsters in Tundra, always, because for some reason it is really difficult to track monsters in Tundra, because they can move, like, all the monsters in Tundra can move to all the places in Tundra except for five. The only monster that can be in five is Giganox. That is the only, the only, yeah, the only monster that can be in five is Giganox. Other than that, every monster can be everywhere. And also, I don't think Giganox can be in one. I don't think Giganox can be in one, and I don't think... Baggy can be in six. Like, I think those are the only... I think those are the only uh, differences. Giganox, Giganox can't be in one, Baggy can't be in six, and Bariath can't be in five. I think that's the only difference. Otherwise, Other than that, Bariath can go everywhere, Baggy can go everywhere, and Giganox can go everywhere. Because Giganox can actually fly. People don't realize this, but Giganox can fly. And the first time I saw this, I was greatly amused, because once I get to Giganox, which will be the next video, uh, he doesn't look like he should be able to fly, <laughs> but he definitely can, and I'm pretty sure he does it in, uh, in that, um, episode, so look out for that. And I think Bariath is coming to an end, because that's his, I mean, I'm pretty sure this took me about 21 minutes, and we're at 1943 right now? Well, yeah, so 
I, I only go for a cap, I don't kill, because killing would take quite a bit, or quite a bit longer. So normally, when I'm solo, I just wait for them to limp off and just, uh, you know, cap them when they sleep. It's a lot easier, so. Uh, that'll be it for Bariath. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and um, enjoy the rest of the video.